professional. Let me professional. Hello and welcome to Taron Files. I'm Jamie Young, and today I have Kelly Metzner, the executive director for Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance. She is also a core member of Adirondack Diversity Initiative, and you can correct me on this, one of the board members for Gender Equality in New York. Yes, I'm a founding uh, board member for uh, Jenny. Okay, and uh, first to start off with um, the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance, or as we all call it, simply the Gender Alliance. That was started back in 2015, right? The original idea began when I visited uh, someone who is now a very dear friend um, in Syracuse in 2014, mm -hmm. uh, Terry Cook. Uh, she and her husband are trans parents. They mm -hmm. have a transgender son. Mm -hmm. uh, through the course of that weekend, uh, we had a, a wonderful conversation on um, trans issues. Mm -hmm. um, and Terry and her husband were the authors of a wonderful book um, that totally changed my life. Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea uh, for doing something uh, actually culminated in uh, spring of 2014. Um, in 2016, uh, I met and worked with uh, two wonderful people in the Plattsburgh area. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them was uh, Avon Manette. Mm -hmm. um, and Kelly Hornby. Kelly is a social worker uh, with um, Clinton County um, Mental Health. Uh, mm -hmm. Kelly was the person who put me in contact with Avon. And in that initial meeting, uh, Avon's group was uh, a group of loose transgender youth who wanted to get together and have some sort of fellowship. Right. Uh, Kelly Hornby and I were looking for a group to put together as a more formal meeting uh, type situation. And the conversation that Kelly and Avon and I had that uh, one afternoon really cemented the idea that we needed to bring our groups and ideas together mm -hmm. uh, to create LGBTQ and especially uh, transgender uh, peer support. Right. So that was uh, probably in the early spring of 2016. Mm -hmm. um, when I was out on medical leave that summer, uh, the idea to actually formalize legally uh, what we were doing um, was something I had considered. Uh, when I came back uh, from medical leave, uh, we contacted an attorney to actually begin the actual formation of creating a 501c3 not-for-profit right. uh, with the name of Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance. Uh, that formal recognition of our 501c3 status uh, came in the spring of 2017. Mm -hmm. uh, during that time, uh, we put together a group of potential board members mm -hmm. um, so we could become a formal, organized legal structure. Right. And uh, since then, um, what was what is the uh, main objective to 
the Horo organization as um, in the way of do they does the organization do support or outreach? Um, the mission of the Gender Alliance is to provide a safe place for LGBTQ people to come together in a safe and uh, secure um, meeting space. Right. We do provide educational training on LGBTQ issues, uh, focusing uh, especially on the transgender, non-binary, and intersex community. Uh, we look to provide events and training opportunities uh, in the Adirondack North Country region. Mm -hmm. uh, that includes um, our peer support groups in Plattsburgh for our adults and um, young adults, and here in the Saranac Lake, uh, Tri Lakes area for transgender youth. Mm -hmm. uh, we also uh, team with community providers and organizations um, to present uh, or events and programs focusing on the LGBTQ community in general, um, but also the uh, trans, non-binary, gender non-conforming, and intersex. Uh, some of those uh, partnerships also include the New York State Division of Human Rights. Uh, we are very happy and proud of that organization, as well as our uh, associations with Gender Equality New York, uh, of which I am uh, original um, founding uh, core team or board member, and mm -hmm. uh, Gender, or pardon me, Adirondack Diversity Initiative, which I'm a core team member of. Um, so we're trying to build coalitions, partnerships with uh, area providers uh, to provide um, resources and training uh, here in the North Country community. When we as a group uh, officially named the organization Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance, that was actually our focus. Mm -hmm. Not Plattsburgh, not Saranac Lake, not mm -hmm. the Tri Lakes. Um, our focus was really to, at some point, expand this to the Tri County area of Clinton, Franklin, and Essex County. Mm -hmm. One of our long term goals um, that we are uh, still trying to uh, achieve is to create an LGBTQ uh, community center in Plattsburgh. Okay. Plattsburgh being the largest population base mm -hmm. with the idea of expanding that out to other local communities such as Malone, Saranac Lake, um, Elizabethtown, Ticonderoga, and other uh, uh, communities within the Clinton, Franklin, Essex County uh, region. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a large um, area, not necessarily with a great population base, uh, but our goals and missions are certainly something that I am hoping that we will be able to accomplish um, for the benefit of all LGBTQ uh, community members, their families, mm -hmm. and their allies. Mm hmm. Um, right now, because of the whole uh, pandemic, um, a lot of places aren't uh, well around here. They're starting to slowly open up. But during the shutdown, what has the Gender Alliance done in the way of uh, trying to maintain any kind of uh, support group? We, as many organizations, have uh, gone to uh, totally virtual platform. Uh, mm -hmm. We're using Zoom as mm -hmm. our platform. Uh, we have a lot of uh, learning to do still with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are 
continuing to provide weekly peer support groups through our uh, Zoom uh, sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, here in Saranac Lake, and that, pardon me, the Zoom sessions were primarily for the uh, adult, young adult group in Plattsburgh. Um, here in Saranac Lake with our youth group, that has pretty much been shut down uh, due to the requirements of the Saranac Lake Youth Center uh, with whom we partner. Right. And uh, we are following school guidelines in okay. terms of our youth program uh, mm -hmm. with the uh, youth center. And we hope to be resuming our youth program either this coming Saturday. Uh, okay. We meet the second and fourth Saturday of every month. Uh, we're hoping to resume that either this Saturday or um, the second Saturday in August. Uh, but that has been a very strong program uh, here in the Tri Lakes area. Mm -hmm. um, what are the hopes for trying to restart one here in Plattsburgh? In Plattsburgh, uh, we would love to do a youth program. Mm -hmm. We partnered with uh, SUNY Plattsburgh mm -hmm. uh, about a uh, two years ago they mm -hmm. helped us to develop a curriculum mm -hmm. um, and we are looking for plasburg area um, resources who can assist us in putting that on that would mm -hmm. include uh, teachers counselors uh, people who are good with working with youth mm -hmm. uh, middle school through high school uh, mm -hmm. So we would certainly love to partner with uh, people in the Plattsburgh community uh, and find um, uh, opportunity to create uh, resources for our uh, youth up in uh, the Plattsburgh, Peru, um, Champlain area. Okay. Um, with the um, online group, how are people able to be part of that? Even if, say, they don't know about the Gender Alliance itself. We post meetings, announcements on our Facebook page. Mm -hmm. uh, so we create those events. So as people are looking for various events to participate in, uh, during the week, uh, they can certainly find us on our Facebook page. Um, and other than that, it is by uh, email uh, mm -hmm. for people who are have expressed an interest. Uh, we provide the link to the meeting ID and uh, just recently uh, a phone access number. Okay. Uh, and that we will be expanding our advertising and marketing of our uh, peer group uh, Zoom meetings in the um, regional area. And Zoom has really been a wonderful opportunity for us because uh, we are no longer restricted per se to in-person meetings if you're coming from alone or some other uh, Tri Lakes uh, outreach area. Um, and we do hold our sessions when I feel it is convenient for our participants. That is, not during the normal work day, eight mm -hmm. to five. Right. Uh, we are holding these right now on Wednesday evenings, beginning at seven o'clock, mm -hmm. when people are out of work, traditionally. Right. Uh, and people might be more available during those times. Mm -hmm. um, and with the uh, phone call in, uh, people who may not have a good internet connection mm -hmm. or may not have uh, a good uh, computer or uh, other video uh, access, mm -hmm. uh, the phone-in option will provide a much greater opportunity for them to participate. Um, so we are looking to really expand the virtual uh, part of our group meetings. Um, and make it more accessible to people in other outlying non-traditional areas at a time where they may be more available, not during right. the workday, 
mm -hmm. uh, in evenings when they may be home after dinner. Um, so we're trying to make this as easy for people as possible. Okay. Um, is this going to just be for this period of time when the uh, virus is going around, or are you going to plan on keeping this as a permanent fixture for the support group network? I think we're still exploring those options um, between in-person and virtual. Uh, what I am seeing in the professional world is a blended experience. Okay. So there may be some times where perhaps in the fall or winter, depending on uh, the COVID um, experience here in the North Country, um, there may be some times where we are able to finally get together as a group, mm -hmm. socially distance and all precautions in place. Right. Uh, but I think going forward, the uh, virtual experience is something that we want to continue. Uh, in person, in uh, face, one-on-one uh, -on -one is very important uh, right. when you're in a group like this, but I think a blended um, experience is something that we can attract more people with um, and uh, add voices uh, to this group. So I think we're gonna look at both uh, options uh, as we go forward, especially in the remainder of uh, 2020 and into 2021, and then we will make uh, decisions accordingly as a group. Right. Um, the Gender Alliance has been, for the past several years, been putting on Plattsburgh's Pride Celebration. How is that going to be handled this year? That's a very good question. Uh, traditionally, we have held uh, in-person um, events in Trinity Park. Uh, this would have been our fifth year, which would have been an amazing year um, for um, Pride. Mm -hmm. This year, uh, we obviously have to do something different. And so what we are currently looking at is doing uh, socially distant. Mm -hmm vehicle only rolling pride event through Plattsburgh. We are currently looking at different sites where we can organize our vehicles, mm -hmm. um, where people can decorate their cars, uh, socially distance, mm -hmm. and we can process Right. Through the streets of Plattsburgh, including downtown Plattsburgh, because that's a very important area for us, is mm -hmm. our downtown Plattsburgh community supporting our um, downtown merchants. Mm -hmm. And then finally, um, ending up at the Oval on the former Plattsburgh area um, Air Force Base. So we are currently in that process of trying to put this planning together um, and finding uh, venues who will allow us uh, use of their space as uh, an initial meeting um, location. And then we will finalize and recommend that to the Plattsburgh City Council uh, for their approval. Um, but that is our plan right now is to have a rolling pride on October 3rd of 2020 in Plattsburgh. Mm -hmm. And after we're through all of this, hopefully be back to uh, the typical pride celebration at Trinity, correct? That is our goal. Mm -hmm. um, certainly uh, that has been a wonderful venue for us. Uh, the issue we have with Trinity Park is due to its size, its physical size, it is uh, somewhat limiting, um, but we certainly enjoy being in downtown Plattsburgh. That is a Trinity Park is a central meeting and uh, community space uh, that we are very happy and proud to uh, make use of. Um, so that is our goal, COVID permitting in 2020, one. 
too many numbers there. Too um, many numbers, I agree with right. you. Um, I heard this through the grapevine that um, you guys are also looking at uh, bringing pride to the Tri Lakes area. Yes, absolutely. Um, it is beyond time that we bring LGBTQ pride here to the uh, Saranac Lake, uh, Lake Placid and Tupper Lake areas, the Tri Lakes. Um, the Gender Alliance has four or five years experience of putting this together as an organizing organization. Uh, there are many people here in the Tri Lakes who are crying out for that, such an event to occur. Um, so we will be starting uh, very shortly to put that organizing uh, committee together uh, and bring pride uh, here, hopefully at the end of June of 2021. Uh, we need to work and establish new community partners here in the Tri Lakes, and I'm looking on my uh, core event team to assist with that process. Uh, but that is a goal that we're looking at, and uh, I'm sure and confident we will be able to achieve that here in Saranac Lake at the end of June of 2021. Okay, now moving along to another topic. Um, at the state level, what is the efforts going around with the um, walking wire trans uh, law? And that's an excellent question. We just had our gender equality New York uh, meeting uh, this past Monday night, Tuesday night, uh, where that was explicitly discussed. Uh, the New York State Legislature is currently um, back in session. Mm -hmm. uh, that bill is before the Assembly right. passage. Uh, we have enough sponsors in both the Assembly and the Senate for right. passage. Inexplicably, I don't know why, it is very confusing, uh, but the, um, I believe it is the assembly, um, head of the assembly, and I, and I could be wrong on that, and forgive me if I am, um, is right now holding that up. We have the votes of uh, available sponsors uh, in both the uh, Assembly and the Senate, but the majority leader is currently, for whatever reason, um, holding that up and not bringing it to the floor for a vote. Um, through Gender Equality New York and some of our other partners, uh, we've put out an email announcement asking regional um, members and people on our mailing list to uh, phone their re representatives in the assembly and the Senate and demand that they vote in favor of the walking well trans bill. What that will allow or disallow, if you will, is police profiling of transgender mm -hmm. women and especially transgender women of color uh, for just being out in public regardless of what they're wearing what they're doing what they're uh, how they're expressing in a public venue it will prohibit police profiling of uh, people uh, just solely based on their appearance um, and that is a vital issue uh, for people throughout New York State. Yeah. Sounds good, but um, <clears throat> also sounds like it may be held up until next session too. I think that depends on the residents of New York State. Uh, certainly Jenny has put out um, an email uh, and the 
North Country Gender Alliance in uh, collaboration with Jenny and our other state partners, uh, urging uh, residents to phone their representatives. Uh, we do have the votes. It's a matter of convincing uh, the um, majority leader, Andrea Stewart Cousins, mm -hmm. uh, to bring that to the floor for a vote and support. We do not know what's going on in the background. It is a mystery. Um, the Democratic Assembly and Senate have been wonderful in their support of LGBTQ and trans issues, and especially in the last year. Uh, so this is actually very confusing as to uh, what is going on right now. I do not have a, a good answer to give, uh, but certainly that is uh, an issue that uh, Gender Equality in New York is actively pursuing along with our other uh, state agency and um, partners. Okay. Um... Now a question about um, Adirondack Diversity Initiative. What is their mission and goals? I became a um, founding core team member many years ago uh, through the efforts of a wonderful gentleman, uh, Pete Nelson. Mm -hmm. uh, he is down in the Keene, New York area. Pete's vision was that the Adirondack Park needs to be open and accessible to people of all races, ethnicities, mm -hmm. genders, religious groups, uh, any criteria that you can imagine, that the Adirondack Park needs to be open and welcoming and accepting to all people and, and, not and, only within and, this park but from people outside the park in other areas of new york as well as other people outside of new york state and that's referring to the overall area of the adirondack park network yes yes okay and I think right now there are some discussions as to what that region actually means. Um, and does that include Malone? Does that include Plattsburgh? Does that include uh, areas in the southern um, part of the Adirondack area? And I think those answers are increasingly becoming, yes, we need to become uh, more inclusive regionally. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a new executive director uh, who came on board uh, in the fall of last year, uh, Nikki Haight uh, Patterson. She is a wonderful, dynamic um, person. Um, I count her as a good friend. Um, right now, the ADI is focusing on racial issues that occurred here, especially in the Saranac Lake area. Mm -hmm. but have other larger ramifications uh, throughout the Adirondack North Car Country area. Uh, so ADI is uh, focusing right now on race. And as a member of the core team, my focus is always on LGBTQ because the LGBTQ community spans all categories, mm -hmm. racial, right. ethnic, uh, gender, uh, income, um, orientation, identity. Um, so um, ADI is uh, going to be a vital force in our area in mm -hmm. being a more open and welcoming um, region for all people, um, not only within the park, but from outside the park right. and uh, people from out of state as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... There's a lot there, a lot of there work is, need, that we, needs we to have, be done. Uh, we have a very large mandate. Uh, ADI is um, sponsored by New York State, so uh, we are receiving uh, state funds. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are looking to see how we can expand diversity and inclusion 
in many forms uh, here in the Adirondack North Country area. Uh, that includes the Southern Adirondacks as well. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as uh, the gender alliances, um, what is the overall goal with the gender alliance moving forward along with their partnership with uh, gender equality and ADI. We cannot operate and live in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. uh, we need our community partnerships. And by partnering with Adirondack Diversity Initiative, partnering with Gender Equality New York, uh, we are able to bring resources from other parts of the state, other experiences that we would not normally have mm -hmm. to our community here in the North Country. One of the things I've been very proud of is uh, gender equality in and of itself mm -hmm. has been able to bring people from our area down to the Albany area to right. be and participate in things like Equality Day in Albany. Mm -hmm. We have been very fortunate to bring people from other areas of New York State, Buffalo, um, Long Island, uh, the Albany capital region, uh, people from the uh, governor's office mm -hmm. here to the North Country uh, and have sponsored events for our regional community areas, bringing in these guest speakers from mm -hmm. other areas. So we are able to bridge the gap from North Country to New York State and from New York State here to the North Country. Uh, and I think that's been a wonderful opportunity to bring voices um, together and so that we are not so isolated. And I think that's the way many people feel here in the North Country, that we are isolated sometimes from other areas of the state. Um, and so bringing us to them and bringing them to us, I think is a very important um, component that we will continue to work on going forward. Um, also looking forward, and this has been something that, um, some people have mentioned, um, will the Gender Alliance ever do events or activities with their partner organization over in Vermont? Pride we Vermont. would love to. Oh my gosh, we would love to. Mm -hmm. um, we recognize that we have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. We have a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to work with uh, our organizations in Vermont. Um, certainly, we have always enjoyed going over to Burlington Pride every year. Mm -hmm. That's been a, a wonderful uh, experience. We have visited um, the Burlington Pride organizations, uh, Outright Vermont uh, and others. Um, and I think they have a great deal to teach us on how to do things on our side of the pond. Mm -hmm. uh, the other organization I would love to work with is the Q Center, mm -hmm. Q Center, sponsored by ACR Health down in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. So by partnering and working with these other organizations, I think that they can provide the roadmap, the blueprint of how we get things set up and organized. First in Plattsburgh. Right. And then later as we expand to other North Country communities. So I would uh, certainly welcome that uh, opportunity as we get ourselves better organized and better funded in creating a uh, LGBTQ Center, mm -hmm. uh, to reach out to them, get their experience, their expertise, their know-how, and uh, bring that here to the New York side of the pond, as I say. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Well, um, I think that that's pretty much the show for now. Um, thank you for being on, Kelly. Thank you so much for having me. And uh, yeah, have a nice evening. You have a most wonderful day and or evening. So I thank you so much for including us in your uh, presentations. And I look forward to uh, chatting with you all and uh, working with you all uh, very soon. Thank you so much. Bye.